Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I like to watch. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Being There, which released in 1979. Based on the book and a screenplay by Jerzy Kaczynski and uncredited Robert C. Jones and directed by Hal Ashby. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Peter Sellers playing Chance the Gardener. He is a man with some mental deficiencies who has been locked in a house gardening for the majority of his life. When he finally is allowed out into the real world and has the freedom to walk around, he interacts with many different people and his status in society starts to rise at an unprecedented rate. Sold up. Ever watch a game on TV and see the players chugging down this stuff? Ever wonder why? So we've talked about director Hal Ashby before, especially with Harold and Maud. Yeah. But I didn't realise that Peter Sellers was the one who was really sort of petitioning to get this film made and also wow. to play the, the lead role. Yeah. Now, he's most famous for his role in the Pink Panther movies. Yes, yes. Uh, but before this film came around, like 10 years before this film would even be made, where he wanted to get it made, his career was kind of waning a little bit. His popularity had dropped. His critical responses were pretty low. But then after the revival of Pink Panther, yeah. very successful movies as well. So he was back on the top of his game again. And so that's when they turned around and went, OK, let's have a look at being there. Yeah. And he had already you know, well prepared for this role. He had even sent the author of the book like a letter saying, I, you, I'm your gardener. Like that's how much he knew wow. that this role was meant for him. Yeah. And uh, he he practiced. He uh, One of his inspirations, I think one of his greatest inspirations was, was Stan... Uh, you know, the Laurel and Hardy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, literally, literally borrowed some of his mannerisms, the way that he spoke. Yeah. And uh, and really, you can see that come through on the screen. But yeah, this is one of those films. It's from 1979. Uh, it's getting on in its years now. Yeah, yeah. But thanks to Criterion and the wonderful, wonderful sort of Blu-ray restoration of this film, it looks absolutely fantastic now. And uh, and it's probably one of those. Uh, great American films that's now mostly been forgotten. Yeah. Um, first time, first time for me to watch this movie. I mean, we were talking about which film we should review next and Gary said, oh, we've got being there with Peter Sellers and just the name Peter Sellers jumped out at me and I was like, you know what? In fucking 10 years of doing film reviews, Peter Sellers has not turned up on our list. Not yet, no. You know, we haven't done Dr. Strange Love or How I Came to Love the Bomb. We haven't done any of the Pink Panther movies, you know? So I was just like, you know what? Let's just, just, just take a gamble. Let's go with this Peter Sellers movie. And um, I'll be honest, my mother taught me when I was young, like, if I've got nothing good to say, I shouldn't say anything. But nobody ever fucking taught me what I should say if I've got nothing but good things to fucking say. Let it all out. Let it Share all, the love. Fucking let it all out. <laughs> Share the love. And I said to Gary before we turned the camera on, it's just like, I feel kind of bad now because I don't think I can actually ever have a conversation with somebody about films if they are the type of person who just goes, uh, shit, I didn't like it. Because those types of people will never ever watch this film. Uh, and, I, and I don't mean that harshly. I'm not saying that they will never, you know, take it upon themselves to watch it. I get that. I think it's, it's definitely not, you know, your popcorn movie, oh, yeah. right? It's not your popcorn movie. But if you ever, ever thought about actually sitting down and enjoying or a movie or learning something from film. This is that film. I mean, like we said, Peter Sellers, everybody, as soon as you say Peter Sellers, if you didn't know about him, you certainly would immediately go, well, Dr. Strangelove or Pink Panther. Right. For me now, it's being there. If you've never heard of Hal Ashby, if you never watched Harold and Maud, you fucking owe it to yourself to watch this film film because it's just oh my god like i don't want to be i don't want to come across like a fucking asshole but it's so good yeah <laughs> it's so beautiful just even the beginning the opening sequence of just chance in bed watching tv waking up to his routine i love that the film title pops up and he's just there going like, he's, you know, he's just woke up. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, yeah. he's about to go about his routine. Just, yeah. And it mostly starts with watching TV. 
he just sits there with his remote and he's like, oh, I'm done listening to the music. Oh, let's, his, let's watch a cartoon. His whole, his whole entire life is revolved around TV. It's and relatable. They're, they're, yeah, <laughs> it's totally relatable. There are, there are moments where you're thinking, how can he be distracted by TV? And it's, it's because you learn so much from his character that they, the, the film actually doesn't tell you. Yeah. Just you the just... way he carries himself, his mannerisms, his yeah. quiet reservedness. Uh, but you do understand that there's something off kilter, or something not quite right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Luis, the other sort of maid of the house, yeah. reports to him, like near breakfast time, that the owner of the house has passed away. Yeah. Uh, we don't really know what the rest of the relations kind nope. of are, whether, you know, it was his dad or his brother or anything like no, that no, to nothing. begin with. But it's the fact that there's a non-reaction, like it doesn't register. Yeah. And so you, you might assume it's a kind of shock, you know, it's a kind of not dealing with it right now. And he's just like, I'd like some eggs, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> I'd like my breakfast, Louise. And she's yeah. like, did you not hear what I just said? And he's like, yes. Right? <laughs> so it's like, what, what, what's going on here? But then she uh, basically says, like, you know, I'm leaving now. You know, yeah. We won't see each other again. Like, now that he's gone, I'm leaving. And he just carries on his routine still. He yeah. doesn't know any better. Doesn't know. Um, and we don't really get a sense of how much time has passed because, you know, everything's all of a sudden covered with white sheets. And, you know, and it, it's a parallel to, obviously, the body you know, has the sheet yeah. put over yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah, now yeah. everything else is covered in sheets. It's like everything's dead. And he interprets it as the house is being closed down. Yeah. And yeah. that's when Palmer turns up with his wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Palmer, David Clennon, you know, fucking, I, I was so shocked when I saw his name on the list. And I was even more shocked to find out that Richard Dysort was in it as well, who yeah. plays Dr. Allenby. So we got two pre-thing, pre-thing <laughs> fucking actors in this movie. So immediately, the movie in my mind just went, pew, to the moon, baby! Yeah. Fucking... Like, they both get introduced separately. And I'm like, there's no way these characters are ever going to meet on screen. But like an hour and a half into oh. the film, they're at a bar. And oh. I was like, yes! You know? <laughs> so good. Like, like They're talking about chance. And I'm like, secretly, they're going to do a blood test on him and right. find out if... <laughs> He's an imposter. Mr. Franklin, I must ask you and Miss Hayes to keep this incident with Mr. Gardner strictly to yourselves. Hmm. There's no telling what he could have been involved in. Hmm. <laughs> but but Thomas Franklin, played by David Clennon, he turns up and, and it's his job to sell off the estate. He's, he's a lawyer um, and he's going around, he's getting ready to, to sell the house or the property and all that. And he comes across Chance, who still in the house he's chance we, like i said we don't know how long he's been there for but he's literally been getting up doing the same routine every day waiting for louise to bring him his breakfast but she's not coming and he he doesn't register that i i absolutely love that bit where peter sellers went into the room with the old man and he pulled back the sheet put the hand on his head and then he sat down and there was just brief tears in his eyes he carried on watching tv but there was, there was in Peter Sellers' face this hint of emotion that he was sad mm -hmm. that the person had died. But you don't know anything about their relationship. And so then when Thomas Franklin is explaining to, to Chance, like, what do you do here? Oh, I'm the gardener. Well, there's no records of them having a gardener. Yes. And it's like, what is your claim against this estate? Are you after money? No, no claim. And he's just... You know, immediately you could kind of come across, oh, he's naive, he doesn't know, he's being secluded from the world and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, there's just this goodness in him that there's no hostility, there's no hatred, there's no, you know, he could easily just work in the garden as long as you get feeding him every day, that would be his life. He's just so content. Yeah. Yeah, but they, they tell him, like, you know, get, you have to lawyer up or get out. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, I don't understand. And before you know it, you see him packing his suitcase. He's rolling yeah, up his clothes. I, that was the moment. I, I just, That was the thing I said to you before turning the camera on. That was the moment I realized that he actually kind of knew certain things. Because I, I when they were telling him to get out of the house, I thought he was going to, you know, I thought he was going to maybe I am Sam it and go mental and have a breakdown and get emotional and things like that. This... That's not Chance. Chance goes up into his attic, gets out a suitcase, starts packing his stuff, and then that music started to kick in, Gary. The that music Space was Odyssey is great. Fucking ace! <laughs> yeah. 
Oh man, it's it's so good because it plays. Uh, you think they're just going to play a part of it, but they play the entire yeah. song out as uh, he's walking through. I mean, the moment he leaves the house, because he's so well dressed, yeah, and the house is well kept, yeah. When he comes out into this environment, which we find out he's never left the house, no, and we see like. There's all these homeless people. There's poverty. There's graffiti. Yeah. There's these broken down cars. I'm like, this you know, is he's he is a homeless person now. He yeah. is in like his world. But I I thought he was coming. I thought he was going to step out from like a big mansion or something. I did not expect him just to step out onto a normal street. Yeah. Because he didn't feel befitting of it. Yeah. You know? He was out of. It literally is now a fish out of water. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And this entire montage is that music is playing as he's going around. Oh, it was you know, he talks to a so police officer beautiful. and tells him that that tree needs. Med- emergency care. Yeah, you know he uh, he ends up um, he ends up getting that knife shoved in his face from a bunch of gang members because right. he's, he, he you know he, he needs a garden to look after. It's, it's an awesome. I mean, because this film is it's it's a comedy. Yeah, uh, but it's a very subtle comedy. But there are a few gags. There are a few moments, and this is one of them where he ends up pulling out his TV remote. <laughs> it's like he's trying to change the channel. He's yeah. like, I'm tired of this. I don't like it. But obviously, it doesn't work. Yeah, and he ends up he ends up leaving. And, I uh, I fucking cried when he turned to the lady in the middle of the street and he went will you make me some food because he just he, <laughs> he just saw a black woman, saw a black woman and that's what all he's known knees. excuse me i'm very hungry could you give me some lunch yeah and there, there's a lot of things in the movie that like if you if you're if you're if you're a smart film viewer, and I don't mean that in a harsh way, but if you're watching the film language and the script and the way it's written, there are some things that you might go, "Ooh, I don't know if you can say that nowadays." But the thing is, they were saying it in '79, and it's very relevant nowadays as well. Yeah, that some things might come across as, "Oh, it's it's very racial, it's racist, or things like that." But you have to understand that this character, Peter Sellers' character, Chance. He doesn't know any different, you know. He hasn't he hasn't been taught any different. He honestly just he knows Louise her, her dark skin and she brought him food, so he just applies that same mentality to everything else that he's going into into the world. That's when we realize how childlike and yeah. naive or innocent he really is. He yeah. doesn't understand really what's going on. He's and he's homeless. He's got nowhere to go. He's just going. Yeah, you know, like where is this going to lead? I'm just like I feel you know sympathetic to him. I'm yeah. like I feel nervous. Like where is this, where where is he going to land? And uh, in that moment with the music crescendos where he's watching himself on TV yes, for the first yes. time. And of course, there's the moon there as well. So you're getting, again, the 2001 parallels. Yeah. Uh, but he ends up backing up into the road and uh, ends up getting crushed between two cars as a limousine reverses into him. And lo and behold, this would be the twist of fate, uh, the chance encounter, I guess, <laughs> yeah. that would catapult you know, the rest of the narrative. And yeah. uh, he's basically been backed into by the wife of uh, one of the wealthiest men in the world. Yeah. And uh, they, you know, they take him in. They're going to take him to the hospital. Uh, but they decide maybe it's best because my husband's got lots of doctors looking after him at home. Yeah. We'll just take you there. We'll we, take don't, you we there. can avoid all the legal stuff and we'll just patch you up there. Uh, but again, you get these sweet moments where she offers him a drink because he's like, I'm still really hungry and I haven't oh God, had anything to yeah. drink. And I'm like, I don't know if, if 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 Chance has had any food or drink since Louise left. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. like, how many days has it been? It could have been like, a week, I don't two know. weeks, things so like I'm that. Like, yeah. uh, but he ends up, she ends up pouring him an alcoholic drink and he starts coughing and spluttering <laughs> it he's whilst he's trying it. to say his name. And so it gets misconstrued. Yeah. So Chance becomes Chancey Gardner. Yeah. Uh, not Chance the Gardener. Yeah. So he's now got this fancy name and he's already wearing a fancy, fancy suit. Cli- yeah. So it, it's literally from this point onwards, a series of assumptions that people make that humans do all the time. It's shorthand knowledge. You know, you see someone in a, in a, in a shirt and, and shorts, you're like slagger. Yeah. You know? Yeah, <laughs> but people do. They shorthand yeah, they those do. straight they away. Yeah, um, and and uh, and and I like that because it's because we because we know because we've already spent like ten minutes with Chance. Yeah, we know that's what it. We we've know only what had is. ten minutes. Yeah, exactly, but we know. But then it's fun, and that's where I guess a lot of the comedy comes from is those misunderstandings. Yeah, as it, people start to think that he is an elevated man of of, of business or yeah. wealth. Yeah, uh, when we know where he's just come from. I mean, like I said, that Brandy situation in the limo was absolutely funny because I saw her pour on the glass and my brain was like, I don't think he's drink, drunk alcohol ever, ever. ever in his <laughs> life. 
And he and it's the fact that Peter Sellers doesn't try to sip it or anything. He obviously just goes with down because he's absolutely thirsty, and it just burns his throat. And the way he acts, like he's, he's never tasted before. And she's she's trying to talk to him. Eve Eve Rand, played by Shirley MacLaine. You know, she's trying to stay on his good side, I suppose, because you know they don't want to get sued or anything. And she's just really kind of taken back and kind of shocked of just how easy he is like oh can i watch tv in your limo she's like okay and so he does and then you have that fucking basketball fucking video <laughs> play which was just some of the weirdest fucking and I, I was loving that all of the tv interactions that you were getting kind of went in hand in hand with the the scenes that you were watching as well absolutely because chance will borrow a lot of the stuff that he sees on tv and yes. use it in his day-to-day -day or in his you know um different encounters that he has throughout the film. Yeah. I want to say as well, there was a special credit to the person that did all the research and selected all they the did. footage yeah, yeah. to go in the film because it couldn't have just been any random channel. It no. was all pre-selected stuff that would matter and be important. And of course, actual televised things as well. Yeah. So I was like, that was really well done. Really like that. Yeah. And so it turns out that Eve Rand, Shirley MacLaine's character, like Gary said, uh, is married to one of the wealthiest men in the world. Um, Ben Rand, uh, played by Melvin Douglas, who I was very surprised by. We'd, we'd already done him the, in, changeling. the Changeling. Yeah, and I was yeah. just thought, well, he was absolutely outstanding that. How's he going to be in this? And he, he's dying of um, a, a blood disease or something like that. And so he's obviously paying a lot of money for doctors to help him stay alive. Not in a... Not in an evil, sleazy, money-grabbing type of way. I'm, I, I'm sure that the Ben Ryan character has done some things in his time to keep his business going. But at the same time, what we see is a man who's trying to get everything in order before he passes so that he can know that his wife is taken care of and that she's, you know, looked after for the rest of her years as well you know and so when he has his interactions with chance it's so heartwarming because like we said chance is like a new baby coming into the world he's just walking around talking the elevator sequences were fucking amazing <laughs> there's a few of them and he keeps asking questions like oh this is a very small room or has it got the television in here and then there's that one where he sat there and the guy who's wheeling him around just bursts into laughter and he's like oh i'm sorry sir i thought you were going to say something funny about the elevator again <laughs> oh man so how long are we going to spend in this room <laughs> <laughs> and that conversation was great yeah. because it was just chance was asking about the elevator and the guy that's pushing the wheelchair thought he was talking about a doctor and so while you're listening you're they're, they're getting information crossed you know, crossed yeah. aren't they and it's like how long are we going to stay in this room oh until the doctor says and so chance is like i'm going to live in this elevator forever <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it's really subtle comedy, but it's 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 not it's absurd. Yeah. But it, it's innocent as well. And the more pure uh, of a character that we see in 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 Chance, you know, you more you endear to him. So you want to see where where this character is going to end up next. Because in the, a minute ago he was on the streets, and now oh, yeah. and now he's in in this wealthy mansion. It's like whoa. Well, that's it. Doctor Alan B. Uh, Doc Copper from the thing uh, comes along, and he's wanting to, you know, to check on the leg and make sure it's all fine and things like that. And so he suggests that Chance stays at the house for a couple of days, just just so that they can keep him on the observation. Which Chance is like, I'm fine. Yeah, I just I just watch TV. I Tells suppose. him to take the weight off that leg. Yeah, he just stands on one leg. <laughs> he does. Yeah, he did. He just stood on one leg while watching TV. <laughs> But it's the interactions with him and Ben as well, which I thought was outstanding. Because like, like I said, the Melvin Douglas actor, you know, he, he, he carries this experienced old man character really well. Like I said, we already had it in The Changeling. And so for this movie, he spends the majority of his time just lying in bed, looking like he's going to die at any moment. And it just works so well. Because then when he has in his interactions with Chance, and he's talking to him, and Chance is just talking about gardening. Yeah. You know, and just, like, just listening. He's just listening and just agreeing to when he when But it he then to. kind of perks up after yeah. having these conversations. And then uh, they have that dinner table sequence. Yeah. And uh, and uh, they, you know, they, they really start to bond, you know. And, uh, and then they end up having that moment where they're sat there uh, sharing cigars. Cigars, yeah. And, uh, and... 
And Ben sort of is explaining about the economy and his business. Yeah. And he gets some insightful wisdom from Chance. Yeah. Uh, that he kind of interprets his own way. Yeah. And then goes, that's absolutely genius. Yeah. I'm going to make a trust fund and put money in it. I'm going to put you in charge. And I'm sat there like, like, what? <laughs> he was homeless. He's not yeah. done anything. He I doesn't mean, understand just... properly has... what you're talking yeah, about. He but is... he's just interpreting it his own way. It's like, a, he's like, I don't know, like, like Chance is kind of like the positive mirror. The optimist is yeah. just reflecting back what people want or see in him about what he's saying as well. And it's... It's fascinating yeah. to watch the, this play out because at the same time we know as an audience the real the real chance. But yeah. it's interesting watching everyone else see something different. But that's it. It's it's like they're they're all the main characters with their story going on, and Chance shouldn't have as much as, of an impact as he does because he's not really doing anything or saying anything. He's just there. But then at the same time, because he's being there, I suppose. Yeah. He's he's having such a, a knock-on effect with all these other people's lives where they're looking at it going, oh, maybe I was looking at things kind of wrongly, you know. Maybe I should look at it as easy as chances. There was a shot with the dinner I, I wanted to talk to you about, which I was really surprised about, was um, it, it cut to a camera shot where you had Chance sat in his chair, Ben in his, and the wife and the doctor sat. But the, the where the camera was angled, it all the other chairs on the left side blocked Chance's yeah. face. Yeah. And you could see everybody else. You could you could see uh, Ben, you could see Eve, you could see Dr. Allenby. And I just thought it was a really interesting shot because I've never actually ever seen a shot where somebody's actually tried to obscure the, uh, the, 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 the main guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you get the uh, the sort of the bird's eye view shot at one point and you realise how massive this massive. table yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just like, well, what a waste of a table. <laughs> you know, because it's like four of you sat at the end of it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it shows their wealth and also shows how, you know, how... How much they're wasting, I guess. Yeah. At the same time, that's just a perspective. But then you get that camera perspective as well. And uh, it is interesting that I guess, you know, like Chance is, for all intents and purposes, kind of a blank slate. Oh, well, that's it. I wasn't too sure if the film was trying to tell me, like, he's not of this world. Yeah. Like, he is. He's human or whatever. But he's so special. Mm. Like, he's different to them. You know, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there, there, there is some really good cinematography in oh, the film. There's God, some great yeah. shots, great angles. It's well lit, and uh, yeah, that dinner dinner scene table is is one of my favorites as well. Just yeah. from from the angles they use, the lighting they use, from the dialogue as well, and how we really connect all these characters now that they're all sort of talking together, and we find out that the president of the United States yes. is going to be visiting soon, uh, and Benjamin Rand really wants chance to meet the president. Yeah, to share. His insight into the economy, because apparently the American economy is crashing at this point in time. Oh, well, surprise, <laughs> surprise. Man, Jack Warden uh, playing the president. Uh, like, I, I've watched him a few times in some really good roles. I liked him in uh, Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead. Nice. I liked him in The Replacements. I'll always remember him from the Problem Child <laughs> from trilogy. The Problem Child <laughs> I don't know why, but it's just that role. He's just, he's just a really good actor for doing this role of... You know, you're your your standard American guy, you know, just there. And and it was such it was such a good sequence where they come into the library, you know, and they look up and the president's there reading books and he comes down and he he's so happy to see Ben. But then at the same time it's like it's like they're close, but they're more business partners than actual friend friends. Yeah. Um and then the way that Jack Warden, the president, kind of interacts with Chance, who we already know you know, can't, can't hold a conversation with anybody. He kind of just repeats or does other things that he sees other people Talks do. Talks about gardening. Yeah, that's it. So he's shaking his hands just like he saw the president shake hands on TV because he thinks that's the way that people shake hands. And then they're sitting there and... Like, he kept trying to interrupt the president. Yeah, because the president <laughs> went, by chance, have you? <laughs> and, and he would be like, yes. Now, Ben, I was wondering if you had a chance yes. to go. Did you happen to have a chance to yes. go? Yes. <laughs> By chance, yes. <laughs> yeah. And so the president literally had to change his words. <laughs> so that was great, yeah. And that's it. They're talking about the economy and, and the, the, the rising costs of things and what they want to do for the people of America. And so Chance just discusses about gardening. And he makes it sound so simple but then at the same time i'm sat there going 
it totally makes sense. You do have a spring and summer and then autumn and winter comes along and that kind of is your, your, your real down period where you don't have as much money coming in and people aren't buying anything. And then just like Chan says, but then you're back to spring and summer again. And so the president's like, you know what? You've just made the entire world's problems yeah. so simple <laughs> yeah. by just talking about the seasons. It's yeah. like, what? That's not... I mean, it, it comes across as really profound and interesting and wise. But in a but weird way, it, <laughs> it is. is. Because that's all he's ever done in that garden for the 60, 70 odd years that he must have been there. Because yeah. we understand that he, he was there when he was younger. And so as the world has gone around him, as he's gotten older, he's just dealt with that garden. And so he understands that that's how it, the world works. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, the president's giving a speech to the nation <laughs> and he addresses Chance. And he's just yeah. like, I just met this uh, Benjamin's friend and advisor and this is what he had to say. And the American people are like, yes, yeah, this yeah. is absolutely great. And then, then we get all of these little narratives that go throughout the film where... You know, people are like, who is this person? It's, yeah. You know, this wealthiest elite person and the president have talked about this person. <laughs> the FBI are looking into it. Oh, the CIA God, are looking into it. Kidding. The newspapers are looking into it. And like, we've got no record of this man. I'm like, well, first off, you don't even know his name. <laughs> and secondly, yeah, the, he didn't go to school. He nope. doesn't have a, a, nope. a license, a yep. wallet, a, a record. Yep. Nothing. He's Nothing. off the grid. It's so like, well, that's even more absurd. Like, how can somebody have got through the cracks? They, he must be ex-FBI. <laughs> yeah. The files must have been yeah. burned. It's a cover-up. What are they hiding? I love that. The FBI, we, we think either the FBI or CIA burnt all of his files. Well, who did it? We're not entirely sure. Neither of them knows. Right. And yeah, you, as the audience member, you go, well, there, there was, is nothing there. There is nothing you there. You won't there. find you won't anything. find anything. There's a woman as well who's been tasked with finding out this information. She's going to her boss like in this bar. She's like, look, I've looked. There's nothing. nothing. He's like, keep trying. And she's like, I quit. I, I quit. I, there's nothing. I yeah. quit. I love that conversation because the reporter, the, the, that same um, editor, chief, whatever, he rings Chance and he's asking Chance questions. And Chance is so distracted by the TV. He's watching the aerobics video. Yeah. <laughs> and and his answers are just, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're so, honest. You should probably talk to Benjamin Rand about that because yeah. I don't know what my position is. Is it? <laughs> but I can't get hold of Ben Rand, so I'm asking you. No, no, you should ask Ben Rand about he the just position. Hangs up on him. And he just hangs up, yeah. And then the lady's just like, oh, um, there's a TV uh, production. They want to know if you'll do some interviews on TV tonight. He's like, I've yes. been on TV. I've been on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you saw him with the fucking remote. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, oh, no, it's all going to come crashing down now. Oh, it's God, like the limelight so is on him. There's yeah. no escaping this. But he gets applauded when he walks up on stage and he repeats some of the things that he said to the president. Well, he repeats and he, it because he... Had and and he, he also talks like the president's an idiot and the, and the audience are laughing and clapping with him. They're like, he's saying it like it is. Yeah. He's talking like a person, a real person. A real he's, person. Not, he's not a scummy politician or anything. And what was amazing about the sequence was that they built up him in the makeup booth, getting ready, you know, and he's about to go out on stage. But you're told that it's pre-recorded and that it will be shown at 10 o'clock. So as soon as he cuts out on stage, Chance is getting into the limo. That's and, right. And then he's watching himself on I, TV. I really like some of those edits. Yeah. Because like, sometimes the edits happen mid-conversation. Yeah. And it just cuts to somewhere else. It cuts to the president and his wife in bed. Oh. And he's not able to have sex. He's <laughs> distracted or impotent or you know, something. <laughs> And she's just like, it's me, isn't it? It's, it's yeah, me. It's... And it was so real, so real, so relatable because these are two normal people. Yeah. It's just the president and his wife and he's under so much stress, but she's she's gagging for it. <laughs> she's gagging for it. And, and Chance is watching himself and then the president's watching him. Uh, ben and Eve, they're watching him as well. And then it cuts back to Chance, you know, in the limo. And I just love the fact he just turned himself off. Yeah, and he, wanted to watch something else. Ah, uh, it endeared me to him he's so much more. Yeah. You know, he just like he doesn't care about he doesn't himself care. on TV. He just wants to watch something else. Yeah, well, yeah, I love it. But this is where the plot kind of opens up the crack that Palmer, who yeah. obviously met him at the beginning, yeah, 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 knows he was in his house, and now he's watching him on TV. Yeah. He's been addressed by the president, and it's like, wait a minute, 
this doesn't add up. Yeah, yeah. And so you're like, okay, so this is where the plot line's going to start. The thread's going to start to come undone as yeah. the you know these movies tend to go well, that Dr. way. Well, Dr. Allenby had also been trying to find as much information as he could, and he got caught by the Secret Service agent. That's right, yes. <laughs> so then you get the two guys from The Thing getting suspicious over this other guy. <laughs> It's great. And I mean, there's a moment towards the end of the film, isn't it? Where the doctor's talking to him and he calls him Chance. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. Yeah. And he's like, so that is your name. Yeah. And you are a gardener. And he's like, well, yeah, I've been yeah. saying it this whole time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <What> the fuck? <laughs> but I, lo I love the fact that the doctor doesn't go, I'm going to blow your cover. I'm going yeah. to tell the world. I've yeah. got the story. I'm going to break it. I'm going to, you know, all yeah. that. He's just like, you know what? I can see that you're... Because you, at that point, you could interpret Chance as being like a con artist. Could, like yeah. someone who's yeah. homeless, yeah. essentially, who has lied about his past and is now pretty much becoming a, a, an heir to yeah. the wealth of this oh, house. Yeah. Because he's also taking Ben's wife. Because <laughs> Ben's wife is now, Eve, is infatuated with Chance and is literally hanging on his arm, yeah. touching him, feeling him, getting close to him, confiding in him, sharing her emotions with him. Yeah. And of course, Chance uh. is not quite sure how to handle this or deal with this. He's never had to. He's yeah. very childlike. But what I do like is that Benjamin pretty much gives Eve his blessings to... You yeah, know, move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Because they're, I mean, they're not having a sexual relationship no. anymore. Probably haven't for some time. She still he loves him. Yeah, she absolutely. Still loves him, they're yeah. absolutely a loving marriage. Mm. But you know, they're. I love the fact that they 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 know the inevitable. That yeah, it's, yeah, it's coming, yeah, 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 yeah. They're not yeah. not tapping around it in any way. So I I kind of really like that. It's very odd. It's something you don't see in many stories like this. You know? Yeah. So I yeah. really really like that. I I love that too as well. I mean, Shirley MacLaine. I I wonderful have, actress. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot. Of stuff of her in but the fact i saw this i'm like absolutely fucking outstanding because like we said throughout the movie i kept waiting for somebody to be negative or horrible or hurt chance or do something that would ruin it all and it it doesn't you know the the relationship between chance and eve builds as she starts to trust him she starts to feel safer Chance doesn't fucking feel anything. If there's a TV in the fucking room, he's fucking watching it. The room could be on fire. He's watching the fucking TV. To to Eve though, you know, she's got the rest of her life to think about. She's got the her, her past life to to think about. You know, this loving husband who's going to be passing away. You know, and so what is she going to do? How is she going to interact with him? And you know, they go out on this kind of uh, well, it's not really a date. They've got to go to this event thing. And Ben says, look, take chance. I want you to go with Eve. I want you to, to accompany her so that she's not on, on her own. And they go. And, you know, she she's so excitable. She has fun. She is, you know, wanting to, you know, just let her hair down and go out. Chance, though, oh, my God, he's interacting with people. Like, he doesn't even know Russian. No, but he comes across as knowing it. Does he? <laughs> yeah. The Russian I mean, prison. The Russian guy just... completely believes that he can speak Russian. And then the others are like, yeah, we, you know, the, the, the rumor spreading like, oh, I hear Chance can speak nine languages. Nine languages. He's, He's like, you know Surgeon what, General. Point, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Did you notice who was drinking with the Russian president? No. Karpatov uh, was the character's name, but he's played by um, Elia Boskinan, I think it is. He's the landlord from Spider-Man. <laughs> What? <laughs> no, man. I was going for it and I was just like, where have seen this guy? Wow. And he's the lander. He was just stood there drinking and I was just like, oh man, he that's why he's so pissed at Peter Parker. But right. Chance got all the chance. <laughs> but they have such a great time and then they head back uh, to the house and Eve, you know, she, she says to Chance, look, I'm, you know, I, I feel really close to you and I, it's really hard for me not to spend all my time with you, you know, I'm slowly kind of falling in love with you. And there's the moment where she comes into his room and she, you know, she she kind of tries it on with him and he doesn't reciprocate. In not a nasty way, he's just distracted. He's just oblivious to it. Well, that and he's distracted by the TV. Right. <laughs> um, but she, just like everybody else, kind of just, uh, you know, assumes that he's trying to keep her at bay and she thanks him she's like i know now that i can trust myself around you yeah you know i was so afraid i was just gonna literally just throw myself at you exactly it's just everyone's projections of, yeah. of themselves back you know onto him and then back at themselves yeah. it's like they're just it's like a mirror that being held up to themselves and that's why i'm like 
this comedy film has got so many layers oh, yeah. to it uh, that talks about the human spirit and soul and love yeah. and emotions and life and how you interact with other yeah, people uh, and, yeah. while saying something about you know the American economy and and uh, and the, and the, the the rich and wealthy and it's got a lot to say but it yeah. doesn't it's kind of it's it's whimsical as well at the same time so it keeps things light yeah. you know because we're always seeing all of these things from Chance's perspective. I will say, I mean, the film is mostly rated PG. In some parts of the world, it's rated 15. And Oh, yeah, and it totally should be a 15. Uh, and it's, I mean, there's no nudity in the film. However, there is soon, in, in this moment in the film, mm. uh, a, a, like a five-minute masturbation sequence. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, when I read it, obviously, because I wikied it first, because I had to understand how the movie worked. When I read that, I was like, whoa how is that going to come across and so then when i was watching the film it was kind of in my head of oh, there's going to be a masturbation sequence at some point and i honestly thought like when they were at the party this gay man comes up to um chance and they start having a, a conversation and this is what i absolutely loved about this film that it it didn't hide away from any taboos anything in real life it was in there you know the racial stuff with louise when she sees chance on tv and she's all pissed off you know, that Chance has got this chance because he's as dumb as two fucking boards. You know, he doesn't know his white left privilege. Right. White privilege. You know, white man in America can get anything. And you're like, you know what? Yeah, she... From her perspective, it absolutely looks that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but at the same time, kind of. because At that the, point in time as well. The yeah. other people have just assumed that Chance is a rich man because he's white and he's wearing these cool clothes. So let's yeah. do everything we can for him. And so I was like, oh my God, Jesus, that's a, that's a bit tight, you know. And then, then the sexual stuff with Shirley MacLaine. And and Chance meets this gay man at the event that they go to, and the, the gay man kind of is a bit infatuated by Chance. And he's like, oh man, if I could have my way, I would take you right upstairs right now. And Chance is like, is there a TV upstairs? And the man's like, I don't know, could be. And I Ch like to watch. Yeah. And so the gay man's like, well, I'm going to go get my friend Warren. That's it. <laughs> It's like he immediately just assumes then that Chance will watch them have sex and it's a sexual gratification for that gay man more yeah. than it is for Chance. Um, and and I thought, oh, Jesus, I'm going to watch a gay man masturbate on TV. He, <laughs> he doesn't, so I was all right kind of with that. No, I that's when it cuts to them in the limo going home. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Maybe it happened. Maybe it happened. <laughs> that's it. You don't know. But no, we, we spend the masturbation scene with Charlie McLean, who we, I mean, we don't see us don't rigorously see fapping or anything. No, no. You know, it's very tastefully done. Yeah. However, you might want to turn the volume down <laughs> because some people might wonder what you're watching in there because she's quite loud. It's she makes so, some noises. It's so funny, though. <laughs> she's so rolling funny. around on the floor she's, on this rug. She's having fun. Chances. She's holding on to chance for, to help, you know, sort of stimulate her. Well, well this is it. Because he, because because he was watching two people kiss on the TV when she came into the room. That's right. And so he immediately threw himself at her. So she thought, oh, we're, we're totally going to do it now. And then the TV changed. And so Chance changed. You know, it wasn't showing two people kissing anymore. So he was going to watch on TV. And so she's just like, I don't know what you want from me. I don't know what, what, what we're going to do. And, he, and that's when he says, well, I like to watch. He likes to watch fucking TV, you know. But she just goes, oh. Oh, okay. And so then she starts to kind of come out of her shell Completely, a little bit. Because she also confesses that she's a shy she's person. She's a shy person, yeah. But she gets to fully explore this sexual side of her that she's never been able to do before, which is amazing for her. Oh. You know, and a completely enlightening uh, experience. Yeah, it's... and, and, and Peter, Peter Sellers is on the fucking bed doing roly polies and <laughs> <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> It's like, again, it's absurd comedy. It's not like belly laugh out loud comedy, but the, yeah. the whole situation is. Yeah. Uh, it's great. It really is. And uh, it, it's a wonderful moment. Like the like a moment later, they're on the balcony and she comes out to him yeah. and shares all that with, yeah, with him. She, she says, like, I, I completely just felt open. I feel better now. I'm content. You know, I've kind of let go of this feeling, which coincides with the fact that Ben is... is passing away this morning and we'd slowly watched it like he he'd he'd gone for the meal and he seemed all right and he'd spoken to the president but then you know he, well, it was his decision wasn't it he told the doc i don't Stop. want yeah i don't want any more drugs i you know i've taken care of all loose ends and it was funny because he had that conversation with the doctor while he was still recording wasn't he yeah because and so and the doctor was also about to go look i know who chance is now yeah yeah but he never actually told 
Ben, as he was passing, or don't no. leave, like, like, D- what are you doing? Don't, don't do this. That's like, it. these guys are nobody. Um, yeah. He ben, just kept, kept the pretense. So I really like that too. Yeah. Ben just kind of gives chance, like access to stuff. Like, not like chance once or anything, but Ben thinks exactly, it'll be yeah. better for himself. With, and to make ben. sure that his wife's going to, you know, have, be looked after. Yeah. Once yeah. he's gone. And there's that moment where it's the doctor, um, and it's Ben and it's chance and Ben, uh, chance says to Ben, like, are you going to die now? And Ben's just like, I think I might do. And he's so happy to have met Chance and he's so happy that they've spent some time. And his final words are, are like, tell Eve. And he just passes away. And the tears in Peter Sellers' eyes while he stood there, not crying. Yeah, it's the most emotion we've seen sort of, you know. Well, like, since the beginning of the movie yeah. when he saw the old man. Yeah, and he does the same thing again. he does the again. exact same yeah. thing. And... I was like, uh, and then he's just he turns to the doctor and he's like I have to go tell Eve now and you don't actually see that sequence yeah, it cuts to how, the funeral doesn't it yeah to cuts to the funeral but yeah, I could only just imagine that like he's gone and he says it as blankly as he's <laughs> like Eve Ben is dead and she would have fucking just broken <laughs> down and he would have gone click <laughs> <laughs> just watch TV bless him. you know but then yeah it cuts to the funeral um, the president's being a bit of a dick because he's just like Ben didn't want a big funeral and you can hear these fucking jets roaring across <laughs> yeah. you know and there's all those people there and it just seems it seems it's big because the president wanted it big yeah um, and then you get that amazing like this whole like the whole movie for me had just been absolutely one fucking cracking amazing sequence after another cracking amazing fucking sequence. And this final fucking sequence with the funeral, like they're all stood there, they're all upset. Eve is looking absolutely heartbroken. And Chance just fucks off. Yeah, he's just, uh, he just, he just walks off into the woods. He just goes walks off because obviously he's oblivious. This is Chance. But you have all those guys carrying the coffin and they have a small whispering conversation about how they want to get rid of the president at the moment because they don't think he's doing a very good job. But they also know that his ratings are up ever since his encounter with Chance. Yes. So they're like, well, we need to get Chance involved with the president and he'll get re-elected. Or but he's got we'll no get... past. He's And, and then there's no yeah. one like, oh, but the past can kill he's a man. He's being investigated by 16 different countries. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's then... incredible. This knock-on effect that he's had in the world. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, he walks off into the woods and he nurtures a, a dying tree there or a tree that's you know that's uh, leaning over yeah and uh, and it's it's probably one of the most profound final 30 seconds of a movie uh, in memory where you know, he uh, he just starts walking across water yeah how what does that mean now there are possibly like uh, you know, I think there's a lot, but I, like, I, just I, re- re- I reckon there's a, a slew of interpretations. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, for, yeah, for yeah. This Sequence, uh, because mostly I think it's a shock, you know, for the audience to be like, now obviously the mo- the most famous of walking on water is the biblical yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, version. Yeah, 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 so I'm yeah. like, well, is he an angel? Is he sent from above? You know, was he put here to help these people at this moment in in yeah, their exactly. lives? Did, has he died like there? And or did he ghost? die right at the beginning of the film? And all this is a dream because everything that's happened to him is so spectacular. Oh wow, I didn't you even know? think of you that. Know, from like from being homeless to then all of a sudden being in like sitting with the president, being on TV, yeah. mixing with the wealthiest people in the world, getting a girlfriend or whatever. It's like inheriting this wealth like it's fantastical like the, this trajectory it's kind of forest gump like you know yes yeah uh, it's, it's kind of incredible uh so i mean that's one one interpretation now i think um for me mm. uh i i like to believe that he was walking on water the entire movie nice. you know yeah. and uh and that is then the penny dropping for us as an audience because the thing is, we know he's a fish out of water the entire time. Yeah. And so then the joke's on us at the final moment of the film. Yeah. We're just like, oh, I've been had, you yeah. know, yeah. or something. It's just, uh, but it's a profound moment then for us as an audience, like it has been for those that met Chance in the film. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, I think it's absolutely wonderful. I, yeah. Now, another, I was hoping an, he hadn't died at the end. Exactly. Was, yeah. 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 Now, an, another, another sort of interpretation I, you could think of, and it's a more practical one. Yeah. Is that like he has the, he's lucky, you know, he's, he, he's yeah. got the, all these chances and he's super lucky. Yeah. And that, because he, you watch him put the umbrella down. Yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. it's really deep. It's like, really he, deep. So why is he not sinking? And just maybe by chance, he's literally just walking on elevated stones in there. That, that, he, we, that we that he doesn't know or even there. And we don't like, know. Like he's yeah. oblivious to the yeah. fact that he could 
fall in there. Yeah. So therefore, he's not. It's yeah. You know, I, I think it's it's kind of like the coyote chasing the roadrunner. You know, he doesn't fall. Yeah. Until he realizes he should fall. He should fall. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why and Chance he, doesn't fall. And in a way, Chance is never really going to. He's fall never going he's to. Never, the penny's never going to drop. Yeah. There's always going to be somebody there. Yeah. To 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 take a chance on him to keep <laughs> him going and. So yeah, it's, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful oh, uh, ending. Um, now here's another thing because the, the film's not quite over. Like the credits are rolling. Yes. But Chance, but Peter Sellers is still mm. on screen, breaking character, like guffing his lines. He's unable to complete this scene. It's not actually in the film. Yeah. And uh, and, and this rolls right to the end credits, uh, right to the end. Um, and uh, Peter Sellers advocated to have this removed. He was distraught that the the studio thought this was a good idea because. The spell of the movie is immediately shattered at that moment no, in time. I didn't feel like, that. Like it's not chance you're seeing on screen anymore. This is what Peter said as well. You're not seeing chance. No. You're seeing me. No. And that shouldn't be me there. That's like, you've, that's, what are you doing, movie? And he believes that's the reason why he was unfortunately didn't win like best actor at that year because the spell was broken. So the movie, like you were reminded then of a, it was a movie. You know, and so I understand that. And so in yeah. some versions, it is just white text on a black background or, or, or vice versa. But now it's so many years later, I honestly like laugh and cry yeah. knowing that like Pierce Sellers left this world soon after this film was finished as yeah. well. And so it's uh, it's kind of bittersweet in a way. I'm, I'm glad I got to see the sequence because Gary and I were saying it like we, we've kind of been spoiled you know, with us growing up with watching movies, that a lot of movies do do that. They yeah, do it was put, very uncommon. Yeah, they do put the in outtakes the 70s. at the end and things like that. And I've always loved, I mean, Jackie Chan's done it. The Jackass movies have done it. Comedy movies have it's done it. It's mostly comedies that would. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know, because they're showing it. And that's what I loved about it. Because, because yeah, we didn't actually get him to see the do this speech because he says to the doctor in there, you know, it's a black doctor and he got you know, the message from some, some black people on the street and he's just like, do you know Raphael? And the guy's like, I don't think so. And he's like, oh, well, I have a message for you. And so then when you hear the message, I just love the fact that Peter Sellers was doing his best to deliver this message just like Chance would, but he kept bursting into laughter because it's so funny. <laughs> and what makes this outtake even so much better fucking better is that the final one he finally manages to do the whole line without cracking up and it's the guy in the background who fucking cracks up <laughs> It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking awesome. Oh, there are so many great scenes in the film. Yeah, uh, what were your favourites? Man, I had so many that after a while I had to just stop marking them because I was just like, I'd be here all fucking day. I mean, just that that moment where he steps out of the house, I was massively shocked that he was just on like some normal kind of street that you would find in any neighbourhood in America, I suppose. Like, I don't know, I've never been to America, but what I'm saying is just like, it wasn't like a mansion in the middle of some giant, you know, estate somewhere. He literally just walked out and it was run down from what we'd seen inside the house of how well kept it was, how well kept the garden was, how well kept Chance was, to then step out into the real world. It was a real shock. The 2001 remix music kicking in as well was just absolutely outstanding. The, you know the 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 meeting of the old lady in the street if he want if she'd make him food the gang that he crosses who threaten him with the knife a small bit of trivia there for yeah. you is uh, one of the the kids there was actually would be the future bassist of the Allman Brothers band oh right <laughs> um I loved that shot of him walking up the middle of the road that's uh, my favorite with shot the in the movie fucking <laughs> with the with the 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 capital building you know it's capital building in the it was central to the frame it was traffic so coming beautiful. and going oh man and you watch the whole you walk just watch yeah. him just it's walk great. up with the music building and all that kind of stuff um when he's watching tv in the limo and he's drinking brandy for the first time i thought that was absolutely cracking um you know the 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 elevator conversations were funny as hell. They just break it up because as he every time he goes back to the elevator, he's just so in shock because he's never seen anything like that before. Does it have a television? <laughs> no. When he meets Ben, 
for the first time and he's getting the x-ray done and it's just Peter Sellers in his pants. Right. <laughs> you know, I honestly, because it just come off the back of Dr. Allenby injecting him, I thought, oh, Chance has decided he's not going to wear pants anymore. And then they got the x-ray machine out. I was like, oh, right, okay. No, they're actually doing something medical. <laughs> like I said, that, that dinner shot really caught me off guard because I've never noticed any shot like a lot of the times when we talk about films everything's got to be perfect everything's got to be in shot everything's got to be lit well and stuff like that and bang here's how ashby blocking off the main actor and you can just see the four characters that you've just seen like did he accidentally do that did he intentionally do that yeah i i don't know small bit of trivia there for you as well is that uh, director hal ashby also has a cameo appearance in the film oh does he uh before chance goes uh, on tv uh, there's a sort of a an office meeting space. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the guy behind the filing cabinets, that's the director there. Right. Just sort of looking over and going, what's going on? What's going on over there? <laughs> Smoking cigars. And he just can't get his lip. Yeah. <laughs> He's watching Ben do it and chop it, but he just can't. And I just kept expecting him to light it and then be like, <laughs> and he just never did. He just never got around to it until Ben started talking about this trust fund. Getting a telephone call. You know, and being interviewed over the phone and just well, the way Peter Sellers just de delivers his lines and shuts the reporter down. Like he, d he doesn't intentionally do it, but everything he does kind of keeps him safe because people misinterpret it. You know, like, like I said, the reporter, the report, any normal person would be like, oh, yeah, I'll tell you everything about my meeting with the president. And yeah, chances like, I'm sorry, what? I'm too busy watching this lady exercise him in the car you know watching himself on tv and then just flicking the channel over i i thought that was so chance that was such his character it fed into it and so then when he comes back and everyone's so happy about what he said he's like ah. <laughs> right <laughs> what <laughs> I know it kind of comes across maybe a bit racial stuff, but I think that's actually the point, and that's Louise having a go at the TV when she sees Chance on TV. You know, white man America and all this, and you know how he's getting everything. It really made, like, it really made me feel for her as a character, and I, and I kept thinking that she was going to turn up at some point, and you know, break the spell as well, break the spell, yeah. ruin it and stuff like that. But she, but she doesn't. So which it's kind of nice that she doesn't want to hurt him. You know, she, yeah, she hates America and the way it's represented and stuff like that. But she also kind of understands that there's no way chance could have got there by just himself. Cause he mm -hmm. wasn't that smart. He just, he got there because other people, I suppose the FBI and the CIA having a go over not being able to find any information on chance and the president, Getting so pissed off, he goes and orders eggs. Right. I want to poach today, please. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And then that coincides with Chance eating breakfast in bed. And then Shirley MacLaine Eve coming in and trying her way with him. And he's just oblivious watching TV, trying to eat his toast. And so she kind of... Because she pushes everything out of the way of her to try to make it all sexual. You know, Mr. Rogers in the background. It was kind of weird, right? right. <laughs> and then, because he doesn't do anything, she kind of moves the tree back to his legs and puts his plant and his flower back up yeah. and leaves him to it. And he just carries on eating, <laughs> eating the fucking toast. Um, the drunk uh, Spider-Man landlord standing in the background <laughs> listening to the Russian president talk to Chance. I just, it, he just looks so young and it made me want to go back and watch him hate on Peter Parker. Like Gary and I both said, seeing Doc Copper and Palmer standing in a bar, drinking, talking about how they're suspicious about some other guy was just really <laughs> ironic. I know. <laughs> and I'm just like, I know I'm a sucker for the thing, but these two guys were really, really good. Like, Alan B and Franklin, they're, they're, once again, they're characters you think are going to come along and ruin it and break the spell and stuff like that. But in a weird way, they can or they won't you know, because they haven't got the information and they don't even know where to start trying to hurt Chance, even if they did. They just know that he's a gardener who was living in a house for an incredibly long time and now he's out. Right. That, that's it. The, the masturbation sequence, I think, was just really, really well filmed. I mean... A, very tasteful, yeah. Very tasteful. Like, going going away from the fact that, you know, as soon as you say mas masturbation, people go... <laughs> it's like... Yeah, I kind, of, I kind of think we all did it at some point. But what I'm saying is, is that there's imagery that you see in your head. And then when you see it on TV, Hal Ashby filmed it incredibly well. Yeah. Shirley MacLaine acted it 
incredibly well. A bit of trivia for you. Not her. <laughs> <laughs> no, apparently they had to film that sequence 17 times. Really? Yeah, now, I don't know whether it's because they... I don't know whether it's because they wanted to make sure that they got the most tasteful edits. Yeah, uh, or, uh, or to make sure they got the right angles or whether she wasn't able to perform or do it or what, all of the difference. I don't know. All I know is that there's a bit of trivia that says it took 17 takes. Well... If it did, it worked incredibly well, even so to the point that Chance gets on the bed and starts doing aerobics and I was just laughing. I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't turned on or turned off or, or feeling awkward. This was a woman whose husband was dying and she just did something that she felt comfortable with and Peter Sellers just ignored it. <laughs> it was great. Uh, sort of explore. And when any explorer goes slow... Ooh. Um, and and my final sequence has to be the outtake sequence at the end. Like, it was just nice to see Peter Sellers working. You know, he's trying to be this character. I I think more films should do this. Like, they should at least have outtake sequences for people when they go to see a film to remember that you are just watching a film. You know, it's just... I mean, they usually are like bonus features, but it's weird to see it actually in, in I, the film. That's yeah. it. I'd like to see it at the end of the film. I'd like to have gone to see Justice League and see Batman, Ben Affleck, fuck up his lines a little bit. So I'd be like, oh, that's all right. The movie's, you know, the movie is what it is. You, know you mean I, he's not really Batman? <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's all fake, man. It's all fake. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, I could go on, I could yeah. go on for hours, yeah. I'll, I'll try to keep mine uh, short. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, the profound line that he has in the film, though, and that is that um, as long as the roots are not severed, all is well and all will be well in the garden. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it, it works on so many ways and so many levels. So and, many uh, levels, And that's yeah. what happens in the film and uh, that, that works. You already mentioned the sequence where he's walking uh, through the traffic, yeah. literally in the centre of the frame. I love that shot. I think it's my favourite visual uh, in the film. Uh, really, really striking. Uh, it's the sequence, again, going back to the, the dinner table, where uh, um, they're like, what, what do you have, Chance? And he's like, well, I have the clothes and I've got the room upstairs. Oh, and yeah. He, Chance is talking literally about the room that he's sleeping in upstairs, whereas Benjamin interprets it as heaven you yeah know, the 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 good place the beyond yeah yeah and yeah. Uh, and he's like no my boy you don't want to be talking about that room yet and so i was like that was again again a misunderstanding of what the, the meanings yeah but it comes across uh so so well and it it lets you know where both these characters are coming from because one's on death's door as well yeah so yeah great 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 dialogue great great scene the sequence where the president keeps saying by chance have you and chance <laughs> keeps interrupting by going yes yes great i mean there's 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 not many like I said, like obvious jokes in the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. there are moments like that that just catch you off guard. Yeah. And there's another one as well. Right at the beginning of the film, um, you know, there's this moment where, uh, where where Palmer and his wife's walking around the house and he's talking about the car in the garage and he's leaning on it. Yeah. Like he's really proud of this car. And I imagine that was what the, the owner of that car probably would have stood like. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. Leaned yeah. on the car, like proud of the car. And we see him dusting it near the beginning of the film. But there's like a two seconds it's on frame where he's dusting the wheels and you realize that all the tires are completely flat. Yeah. You know, you just like it, it's it, all of that sort of imagery starts to sink in more and more as it goes on. Like you know, his obliviousness to it. But yeah, cr great little comedy moment there. Yeah. I think also, yeah, just the him with the with the gag with the TV remote, like going up, you know, when he's about to be mugged or whatever with the guy with the knife. He's yeah. trying to turn the channel when he turns the channel when he's in the limo. All the times where he's watching TV, like I said, the person who did all that research and got all of that footage to put it in there. Those moments really, really worked. Ian? Do you recommend being there? I I honestly don't believe there is a better movie out there that I could ever recommend over this film. I really feel like actually watching this film has kind of changed my view on movies totally to the point where this has at least got to be in my top five. Or probably even maybe my top three greatest movies of all time. Wow. Simply simply because it's it's smart. It's fun. It doesn't hit you in the face with moral messages. It doesn't smack you in the face for not noticing certain things. You just honestly follow Peter Sellers all the way through. And and I've seen 
the Pink Panther movies and I thought he was really good in that because I love that type of comedy and then I watched him in this and I'm like oh well, fuck the Pink Panther movies mate how did you how did this ever slip past me it's because people look at it and go oh that doesn't look interesting well that's on you as a film watcher and if that's on you that's your choice but you you honestly can't walk around telling people a movie is good or bad unless you actually know really know what is good and what is bad i have seen some utter fucking tripe in my goddamn time so i know my buyers well fucking low but then when i find a movie that i've never heard of and it's just so good the bar just immediately goes through the fucking roof <laughs> i mean even if Palmer and Doc Copper weren't in this film, I'm sure it would still be absolutely amazing. The fact that they are makes me want to go and watch the thing and laugh my ass off all the way fucking through it. I don't care. Peter Sellers is absolutely outstanding in this. Every actor that works with him in every, sequel, in every single sequence is just as absolutely amazing. Like I said, the crit... Uh, the, like I said, the script is smart. The delivery is fucking perfect. Everything, the camera shots are just mwah. Knowing full well as the guy from Harold and Maud. I mean, you already probably knew that I was going to be fucking jumping all over this movie. So go, go and see it. Well, go, go now. Yes, I'm also most certainly going to be recommending being there. Uh, this is a must watch recommendation. It's a wonderful film with a fascinating story, rich characters and the brilliant Peter Sellers who gives his best performance as both an actor and comedy legend. On a surface level, the film is a whimsical comedy that follows a series of assumptions leading to an illiterate homeless gardener, to meetings with the US president and influencing the wealthy elite and appearing on TV and being celebrated as being incredibly profound and wise, where we as the audience understand that chance is a tall fish out of water, which is where the comedy comes from. However, there are numerous deeper meanings that upon the final moments of the film give a different perspective that's incredibly thought-provoking and still has people discussing to this day. Hal Ashby has created some cinematic masterpieces in this might just be his greatest accomplishment on film. It's captivating right to the very end with great pacing, editing and stellar cinematography packed with a brilliant supporting cast who made these scenes so memorable. On top of that, the film has a certain charm, a simple innocence that feels so rare in modern films that makes this film stand out so much for me personally that I hope you get to enjoy this classic, a must watch, and I like to watch. Life is a state of mind. Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. <laughs> I like to watch, Eve. What do you mean? You like to watch? I like to watch. <laughs>